Google announced today they've achieved quantum supremacy. So what does that mean? It's a major breakthrough in computer research. Quantum computers are much more powerful than the ones we use today and can solve problems that normal computers often find impossible. 二零一九年十月，搜寻引擎巨擘 Google 对外声称，该公司建构的量子电脑在运算和资料处理能力上已经打败当前世界最厉害的超级电脑，率先引爆新一波的科技论战。They have demonstrated with the quantum computer that it can perform a computation in seconds, what would take the world's fastest supercomputer years, thousands of years, to do that same calculation. And in the field, this is known as quantum supremacy, and it's a really important milestone. 什么是量子？这是自然界里质量和能量等各种物理量中的最小单元，以某种粒子的状态存在，具有概率、不确定、不可分割和不可克隆等性质。至于量子电脑，指的就是量子之间彼此纠结和叠加等独特物理现象，从事并行预算，创造出超乎想象的庞大运算威力。量子电脑的出现被认为带动了量子力学的二次革命，是近年来物理界最夯的话题之一，也是全球科技领域最热门的关键字。包括 Amazon、Google、IBM、Microsoft 和许多小型科技公司都在量子电脑的研发上投入庞大资源。Google 人工智慧团队号称造出五十三个量子位元的处理器 Sycamore， 在两百秒内完成复杂运算的壮举，还说若用全世界最快的超级电脑来做，恐怕得跑上一万年。但是此话旋即遭到超级电脑龙头 IBM 打脸。该公司研究报告以又气又好笑的口吻暗示，同样的数据若由 IBM 位于田纳西州国家实验室里的超级电脑系统来执行，理论上花个两天半就可搞定，无需跑上一万年。而 IBM 的量子电脑能耐可不仅止于此。暂且不论何种说法可信，但是量子电脑的竞争确实已到了白热化的阶段。I think it's going to be the most important computing technology of this century, which we are really just about one fifth into. 量子电脑究竟能够做些什么？理论上，够强悍的量子电脑可以模拟分子，制造出新药、新物质，协助医学界和物理学界解决种种困扰多时的问题。金融市场可以运用量子电脑，把资产报酬最大化，精准模拟经济展望，进行最艰涩的风险分析。政府则可以透过量子电脑建构出最安全的通讯和资讯保密系统。此外，量子电脑还能够加速机器深度学习和人工智慧的进程。简言之，和传统电脑相比，量子电脑的性能可以说是指数级提升。只要能够成功驾驭个性古怪、捉摸不定的量子，未来潜力无穷。量子电脑在市场上掀起了一股淘金热。数据显示，自2012年至2019年底，全球共有52家新创公司取得创投基金。光是2017到2018年间，就有4亿5千万美元的资金流入量子电脑的新创公司，较过去两年成长了四倍。表面上看来，这个数字远不如人工智慧领域的投资，因为光是二零一八年就有高达九十三亿美元挹注到人工智慧相关新创公司。但别忘了，量子电脑是个尚未真正看到产出、距离应用普及阶段还很遥远的领域，这种规模成长已经十分惊人。It is not easy to figure out how to actually use a quantum computer to do something useful, right? So nature gives you this very, very bizarre hammer in the form of these this interference effect among all of these amplitudes, right? And it's up to us as quantum computer scientists to figure out what nails that hammer can hit. 量子力学是门颠覆传统物理思维的科学。有人担心前景不明朗，量子电脑只是昙花一现，高潮过后就会泡沫化。更何况，目前量子电脑的内部晶片和外部材料都需要极度严格控制周边温度和电磁波的环境，在维护上十分麻烦。IBM 的实验室里有好几台量子电脑，规模都和 Google 相当。业界期待相关研发应用尽快出。
出现跳跃式的成长，才有看到回收报酬的可能。One example is、um, the caffeine molecule. Now, if you're like me, you've probably ingested billions or trillions of caffeine molecules so far today. Now, if computers are really that good, right? Really that powerful, and we have these these tremendous supercomputers that are out there, we should be able to really take a molecule and represent it exactly in a computer. And this would be great for many fields: healthcare, pharmaceuticals, creating new materials,、uh, creating new flavorings. Right? Anywhere where, where molecules are in play. So if we just start with this basic idea of caffeine. Turns out it's absolutely impossible to represent one simple little caffeine molecule in a classical computer, because the amount of information you would need to represent it, the number of zeros and ones you would need, is around 10 to the 48th. The number of atoms on the Earth are about 10 to 100 times that number. So, in the worst case, one caffeine molecule. Could use 10% of all the atoms in the Earth just for storage. That's never going to happen. However, if we have a quantum computer with 160 qubits, and this is a model of a 50 qubit machine behind me, you can kind of figure: well, if we make good progress, eventually we'll get up to 160 good qubits. It looks like we'll be able to do something with caffeine on a quantum computer, and it's never going to be possible. 就和半世纪前的超级电脑一样，业界领头羊彼此竞争激烈，但是搭建出的量子电脑目前都只能算是非常基础的阶段。先进国家的教育体系中，对于量子物理和量子电脑研究的投入也还远远不足。看来人类要找到大自然的那把钥匙，完全驾驭量子世界，还有很长的路要走。